This is Soapbox Radio. Podding it out there. Podding it out there with my lime boots. The Lifestyle Edit. Hey guys, it's Ryan. It's Thursday afternoon um, in Joburg. It is four o'clock in the afternoon and we're coming to you live from the studio. We have an interesting guest today who I'll introduce to you guys shortly. Today we're doing a Lifestyle Edit show and we'll be considering something, I guess, of an alternative lifestyle as I chat to Jackie McCoy Wilson about a post that came across my Facebook timeline a while back. She, she put up a post saying that she was doing a seven-day vegan trial and I read this and I thought, I've got to speak to that lady. It's taken us about three shows to actually get to her, not on not, no problem on her part at all, um, but it's been a show that I really wanted to do um, and chat to her about and discuss veganism. She just got something called vegan keto diet that she's on. It was a seven day trial, which I think has carried on further and it seems to become a lifestyle, but we're chatting to Jackie shortly. But let me start by giving you some background to Jackie and her journey. In 2010, Jackie was diagnosed with thyroid cancer and had a hemithyroidectomy. Since this time, Jackie has suffered with hyperthyroidism, finding it difficult to lose weight. Uh, Banting offered some success, but she found the process frustrating and limiting, and after five months believes she lost more hair uh, than body fat. I can relate to that one. I think I lose hair and increase in body fat regularly. Um, Leaving Banting behind and its reduced carbs dust, Jackie nonetheless became unhappy with her eating, feeling sluggish, tired, low on energy, and even depressed. Early in October this year, saw Jackie decide on a seven-day vegan challenge, which she... um, which she would see her embrace vegetables with a whole food, plant-based diet and a post on Facebook, which is that post I spoke about first, uh, earlier. Um, here we are today, Jackie McKay-Wilson. Firstly, welcome. And secondly, have I summed up your journey to this point accurately? Hi, guys. So, hey, Jackie. I don't know if you heard any of that intro that I gave, Jax. I missed that. Okay, I was just I was just re- relating to everyone about 2010 where you were diagnosed with thyroid cancer, um, then having that thyroid dect- thyroid hemithyroidectomy, um, your your experience with banting um, where you found you lost more hair than weight and then body fat, um, and then even after the banting feeling like low on energy, sluggish. Um, October saw you then decide on the seven day vegan challenge, which is where we come today. Um, and I wanted to know if that has been an accurate summation of where you find yourself at this point. Ryan, that's bang on. That's <laughs> pretty much <laughs> in a nutshell where I'm coming from today. Okay. So, Jack, speak to me about your frustration um, where you're feeling that you made. Um, we were feeling that we made a possible vegan solution to your situation. I think the day I read your declaration post on Facebook, I could actually feel your pain. Yeah, Ryan, you know, I've, I've, for, as somebody that's kind of weighed in the region of 60 kilograms your entire life, to suddenly end up in a situation where you're weighing in at 110, sure. it is likely to have um, an effect on you. I'm so sure. that, that's, that's where, where I was at. And I've, obviously the thyroid and the hormonal issues have had a lot to do with it, but I've, I've tried every diet under the sun. Mm. I've I've gone on Weight Watchers, I've done way less, I've gone and had my blood tested and mm. consulted with dietitians, and all had varying uh, levels of success, but obviously there's an underlying health issue, and mm. I, I, I thought banting would really be the answer, cutting carbs, cutting sugar, I'm, I'm always going to advocate for that, and that is where the ketogenic lifestyle came in, I yes. thought, well, maybe if I, if I get rid of meat and milk, Mm. then, uh, you know, that cuts out some of the hormonal issues because it's very difficult to eat free-range, hormone-free meat and dairy consistently, you know. So, um, and, and, and I started just with normal vegan eating, a normal vegan diet in the first week. It was the challenge, but I found that actually made me feel worse that Mm. first week, just Mm. a standard vegan diet. Okay. And was it your first experience with eating in the vegan way? Yes, absolutely. I'm a, um, a, I am don't know what to call myself now. I was an absolute carnivore in the past. Oh, really? And, and sure. I could happily subsist on, yeah. on steak and biltong and that would be me, you know, yeah. and I'm very happy with that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it is quite an extreme turnabout for me, you know. Yeah, um, sure. But I, I found the... the The standard vegan diet, there's a difference between plant-based eating, whole food plant-based eating, and a vegan diet because you could subsist on on Coke 
and crisps. I think and I'll do that at the vegan. moment. Is that vegan? Am I, am I a vegan, Jackie? <laughs> You're a vegan. <laughs> I must remember that. Will you sign something and mail it to me? <laughs> so, yeah, you could, you could literally call that a vegan diet. But yeah. is it healthy? Is it good for you? Sure, yeah. sure. Okay. Um, so where did the seven-day challenge come from? Was it somebody challenged you on Facebook? Was it one of those type of challenges? Or where did the seven-day challenge come from? Ryan, I've got a lot of Facebook friends who are vegan, and I think, you know, the social media marketing thing, mm. I think it wraps off on us eventually. Sure, sure. <laughs> okay. Do so you know- there, were, there were a couple of friends taking part, and I saw it, and I was at a real low point, and I thought, well, golly, you know, what have I got to do? I've done it all, tried it all. Mm. I'm feeling really um, down in the dumps just yeah. with, with solutions about this i want to feel healthy yeah, yeah let me try it what have i got to do okay and so i jumped in then but um like i say that first week i was eating mainly high carb mm. and low fat okay but, but i found i was hungry all mm. the time i was constantly hungry it was my blood sugar levels obviously went up because i was eating things like potato and um Rice and starch, which I'm, I'm not usually big into starch naturally. Yeah. So the, the first week was actually a bit rough, and I actually gained two kilograms. Oh, my word. Week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but seven days enough of a challenge. I mean, I can imagine. I mean, I know nothing about food, to be honest. All I know is how to eat the stuff. I don't ask me how to make it and things like that. So when we start talking about vegan, we start talking about keto, it's like taking me to very uncomfortable spaces. Um, but is seven days enough? Would your body not need to go through some sort of um, – adaptation that would cause that? Ryan, you, you're right. So what happened with me was I did the challenge for seven days and was so disappointed that I gained weight and that I felt worse. I thought to myself, there's got to be an answer to this. Why can't I feel good when I'm fat adapted, but I find that it's it's the hormones in the dairy and the meat that are probably giving me uphill. So mm. why can't I live a fat adapted lifestyle but as a vegan yeah and that's where i extended the challenge and i thought okay i'm going to give this another month let's see and i started eating keto vegan and and anybody that does any research into this it really isn't for the faint-hearted and mm. i don't think it is for everyone sure because some people don't don't really feel good they don't thrive i think a lot of it's got to do with how much weight you have to lose, mm. what your hormonal situation is. Mm. For me, it's working like a bomb. I, I've now, it's, uh, I started on the 1st of October with Standard Vegan. Mm. After seven days, I switched to Keto Vegan, which is basically a high-fat, low-carb, no eh? mm. plant-based diet. So mm. I am not consuming sugar. I'm not consuming sure artificial sweeteners even and, and chemical things as far as possible it's, it's mm. really whole food lots of greens lots of healthy fats from avos and mm. macadamia nuts and uh, coconut oil and all those good fats yeah and yeah. then obviously you know uh, uh, there's a lot more to it but after after the last three weeks i'm now fat adapted to mm. answer your question okay um and uh, I'm feeling great, and I've actually now dropped six kilograms in the space of the last four weeks. Sure. Okay. How is keto different to banting? Because isn't banting also high, um, high fat, low carbs? Because keto is not specifically vegan only. I don't think keto draws the distinction between vegan. No. Keto, a ketogenic diet simply means that you are in ketosis and i think a lot of people get freaked out about it and they're they're you know i've spent a lot of time in the last month trying to um educate myself on both sides of the nutrition argument and mm. i've watched a lot of talks by uh high carb vegan proponents of the whole food plant-based diet people like dr gregor um and, and and the like, who are advocating for a low-fat, vegetable-based diet, and they're providing a lot of research that okay. back, backs that up. And then I've listened to people on the other side of the fence who are people like Dr. Berg, people like Dr. Darren Schmidt. Mm. These are guys you can go and Google. They have enormous influence. They do their research. They have 
huge online followings. And Dr. Dr. Berg would argue that you should actually live a ketogenic lifestyle, uh, low carb, low sugar, um, but also whole foods, avoiding chemical and processed foods. Mm. And then there was Dr. Darren Schmidt that I was very glad to come across because he actually explained scientifically why both of these diets work, both for weight loss and for health improvement. But keto ketosis is a state where your body is simply burning ketones for fuel instead of burning sugar. Okay. And the human body can actually run on either sugars, which are carbohydrates, or fats. And we're designed to do both. Um, and I think part of the answer to, to you know, your question about banting and keto, mm. if you are living a banting lifestyle, which is high carb, moderate I mean, sorry, high fat, moderate protein, and low carb, mm. you would usually go into a state of ketosis where your body okay. would run on ketones for fuel. Okay. Guys, hang around. And um, when we come back, we're going to carry on checking to Jackie. Chatting to Jackie. Chatting to Jackie. This is Soapbox Radio. Potting it out there. Potting it out there with my lime boots. The Lifestyle Edit. Share your thoughts and be part of the show now. Send a message on Twitter or Facebook at My Lime Boots. Find My Lime Boots on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at My Lime Boots and on you, 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 YouTube at My Lime Boots Live. We're back this afternoon checking to, chatting to Jackie McCoy Wilson about her vegan keto journey. Jax, you were talking just now about uh, the seven-day trial and then how you morphed into um, the keto from week two. You're telling us some amazing results you, you're getting there. In addition to the weight loss, are you, you, you do you feel an increase in energy? Do you feel a healthier person having been on keto, the keto element now for, what, the three weeks, going on four weeks? Yes. Ryan, I'm like a different human being. I obviously because of having only half a thyroid, I'm already at a disadvantage and mm. prone to low energy, muscle fatigue, brain fog, and those type of symptoms. Those are all symptoms of, of a low thyroid function. Mm. And I'm not a doctor, I need to iterate that, but I, I have a family with a history of autoimmune disease relating to thyroid problems. So I'm well versed in in the symptoms and having lived with them. Uh, this is why I turned to diet because uh, I feel that there must have been some wisdom in Hippocrates' uh, words that said, let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. Mm. And I think if we take that approach, we're likely to have better success than just turning to symptomatic relief, you know, yeah. from, from medication and things like that. More so, holistic approach, I would imagine. Absolutely. You know, mm. um, we're sitting with a big health crisis around the world and and it, it, it's largely to do with the way that we eat and our modern conveniences. Mm. Um, I have found that in these last three weeks as a keto vegan, I have less brain fog, less muscle fatigue. I'm, less, I'm just less exhausted. Mm. I can concentrate for longer stretches, which is fantastic because I, I live much like you do in a very oh. always on environment. <laughs> Society, yeah. So you got to you got to be able to spark, you know, sure. and um, I'm definitely feeling better. If, if it was just about how I feel, mm. this is sustainable for me. And I think that that's an answer for a lot of people with diet. You need to be able to find something that makes you feel energized and that makes you feel good. Um, Otherwise, you're not going to sustain it. Sure. Why do you think banting wasn't successful with you? Why do you think you felt disappointed from banting, but yet keto, which is relatively similar, you've had better results, Jax? You know, Ryan, for me, I think it was about the meat and the dairy intake. Mm. I have strived as far as possible to include free-range grass-fed beef and dairy products when I was doing banting. Mm. But... I'm a mom, Not possible. I'm a business yeah. owner, mm. life gets busy, you forget to order your special organic food online, you have a busy week, yep. and Bob, your auntie, you end up dashing into the local supermarket mm. and buying meat or dairy products there because it's convenient. Mm, of course, yeah. You know? and, and I think that is part of my problem, that shopping for convenience was ultimately 
hamstringing my results and I was feeling worse. I was having outbreaks on my skin. Mm. Um, my, my, just my whole hormonal system was thrown completely out of whack. Sure. And, and since I've cut the meat and the dairy out, because it was easier for me to, to get my head around cutting it out than, than being really, really strict about only consuming free range. And I've seen a massive difference. Sure. Okay. Um, and, and we talk about shopping, shopping for the keto vegan or the vegan keto diet, or what, what constitutes your diet now. Um, we talk about convenience, as we just mentioned now. Um, how do you find, are the items easily available? Um, do you not have the same problem just on another, on another level? Ryan, uh, there's not a lot of specifically uh, vegan keto focused products available in South Africa. If you if you go and you search the hashtag vegan keto or keto vegan either or mm. on Instagram, for example, you'll see a lot of food posts from people around the world in the vegan community sharing their ideas and sharing recipes. And and there are things that are available overseas that aren't available here. Mm. Things like your sugar free coconut yogurt or sure. almond milk yogurt you know and that could be really nice to have those conveniences but what it's done is it's forced me to embrace whole food eating so that means a lot of greens and a variety of greens because otherwise you're going to get really bored very quickly mm. and it means a lot of um, nuts seeds um, I am supplementing with soy okay. and there is quite a lot of what would you call it, controversy okay. around soy products because a lot of people say, well, soy is, is bad for you because it contains phytoestrogens and it interferes with the hormonal balance of the body. Mm. Uh, actually, on Twitter this morning, it was quite interesting. A friend of mine who is a vegan and who has shifted to keto vegan, as also as a test run, she wanted to see what difference eating keto vegan would make to her. And she tweeted me this morning and, and thanked me for the recommendation of a certain product. Now, mm. I'm not going to punt any product, mm. but the, the, she tagged them. And, um, and the manufacturer responded on Twitter because in the, in the exchange, there was a little bit of, of uh, 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 interest, mm. let's say, from the Twitter community saying, sure. yes, but is soy good? And, and, and so the dialogue opened around the soy, mm. the soy story. And the manufacturer could step in and could actually share research mm. from Harvard that backs up that non-genetically modified soy is actually beneficial to the diet. Okay. So that was quite encouraging for me because mm. when you're limiting your diet as much as I am at the moment, and let me make it clear, I probably won't stay ketogenic vegan forever. Oh, that was my I, next I, question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, would, I would imagine that once I get close to my goal weight mm. i might then start to introduce more carbohydrates i'll probably have some berries mm. and you know, a bit more fruit mm. and maybe even things like quinoa and uh, a whole wheat couscous a couple of like just a bit more like that would be really nice but at the moment i'm trying to avoid insulin spikes mm. at all costs because insulin is really the problem i'm insulin resistant mm. and insulin resistance is best overcome through a ketogenic diet. Yeah. Uh, they can actually reverse type 2 diabetes in many sure. cases. And don't take my word for it. Mm. Go and read up on what the guys, the researchers like Dr. Jason Fung are doing and um, go and find out because it, it's quite eye-opening. Okay. So, and tell yeah. me, Jackie, is there quite a big community out there on social media, a vegan, keto, keto, vegan, I'm not sure which way to say it, um, a community out there that one can tap into like you um, yes. when you make that yes. decision? Yes, I found tremendous um, sort of support, encouragement and recipe ideas from the global vegan keto community, both on Facebook and on Instagram specifically. I think Instagram's nice because it's visual, so you can get a look at somebody's meal and think, hey, all right, that, that could work for me. That looks really good. Ask them for the recipe if they haven't shared it. But there are a lot of closed groups on Facebook that you can join as well. Mm. And they do ask you a little questionnaire before you join because I think vegans have been 
have taken a hammering online mm. that have teased mercilessly and ridiculed a lot of the time. And I think a lot of people have misconceptions about vegan eating. For me, it was, you know, a lot about health, but there were other reasons that motivated this decision as well. You know, and we sure. can chat about that later. Sure, hundred um, percent. Guys, hang around. Send us your questions on Twitter and on Facebook. If you're watching the live Facebook um, uh, Facebook live feed, we want to hear from you. We want you to be part of the show. Let us know what you want to ask Jackie. Maybe these thoughts are going through your mind, and she can guide you specifically. I'm coming back with Jackie shortly. You're tuned in to Soapbox Radio. To Soapbox Radio. Podding it out there with With My Line line Boots. boots. Share your thoughts and be part of the show now. Send a message on Twitter or Facebook at My Line Boots. Find My Line Boots on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. At My Line Boots and on YouTube. At My Line Boots Live. I'm chatting this afternoon to Jackie McCoy Wilson, who has been embarking on a vegan keto journey over the last four weeks, going into week five, I would imagine. Um, and she's sharing with us this afternoon some amazing feedback. Uh, Jackie, if I decide to pursue a vegan keto diet, what are the important um, indicators and matters that I need to consider? Um, and what should I be monitoring on a regular basis? Is that daily um, to ensure that I remain healthy? Ryan. I downloaded an app called Chronometer when I joined the community. It was one of the recommendations that some of the girls made. And also went to a site called ruled.com. I'll have to find the link for you just okay. to, to make sure I got it right. Okay. But basically, you, you fill in your, your height, your weight, your age, your gender, and your, your other vitals. And they actually tell you how many calories you need to consume on a daily basis. And based on that, they also give you your your macros. So if you're looking to lose weight and you're living a sedentary lifestyle, obviously it's going to be different Mm. than if you're somebody who's incredibly active Mm. and who is actually just looking to maintain weight. Mm. So it, it really needs to be tailored to the individual. And it's very important that you get an idea of what your calorie calorie needs are and what your macro needs are Mm. if you're going to do vegan keto you need to make sure that you hit your protein goals on a daily basis and that's why i use chronometer because i literally track my food intake throughout the day and i i'm not too worried about fat because i'm eating a high fat diet and it's healthy plant fat Mm. um but i am concerned about making sure that I get sufficient micronutrients and that I get sufficient protein from the plant sources. So you do need to track that, and okay. that's, that's very important. Is there a lot of supplementation that goes into your day-to-day routine to ensure these yes. levels are maintained? Yes, absolutely there is. I'm, I'm taking, obviously, the, the two most important ones that they, that they tend to recommend for vegan um, are B12, vitamin B12, and um, uh, vitamin D as well sometimes that can be a problem I'm supplementing with D3 and with uh, B12 I'm also taking a good multivit and I'm also supplementing with a, a good vitamin C buffered powder because obviously I'm not eating a very fruit uh, mm. uh, focused diet, diet at yeah. the moment and, and even the, the high vitamin C content that you'd normally find in in things like um, sweet peppers, I'm, I'm careful, I'm limiting those because they can be high in sugar. So I'm supplementing with extra vitamin C just to err on the side of caution. And I'm feeling really good. Also, other things that can be an issue are electrolytes if okay. you're on a ketogenic diet, particularly potassium. And it's interesting for me to note after the first two or three weeks, I realized I'm definitely not getting enough potassium. Because our daily potassium needs are about 4,700 micrograms, I think, a day, or milligrams. But whatever it is, Mm. I'm not getting that. So I I did go do a bit of homework because you have to be careful with potassium supplementation. Overdoing it can actually be fatal. Sure. So 
and it's not actually a supplement. Potassium you won't simply find easily mm. on the shelves in your local pharmacist. Okay. But there is a chelated potassium supplement that I did manage to get hold of, and it only gives about an extra 100 um, uh, milligrams a day. Mm. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm trying to get in a lot of beetroot leaves. Beetroot leaves and spinach, those are quite high in potassium. I'm eating a lot of avo. That's quite high in potassium. So that all helps okay. because potassium actually controls your electrical impulses in your body your to your muscles and obviously your heart is a muscle mm. um, and, and things like that. So you do need to make sure that you, you're getting enough because you obviously need to drink a lot of water. So you end up flushing a lot of your electrolytes out yeah, of yeah. the body. Okay. Um, something you alluded to earlier, Jackie, is that uh, it's not a permanent lifestyle change. Um, and I see that in the research, researching for today's show, um, it's recommended definitely not for people under the age of 18. Um, and also as a as a more of a short, not short term, I don't think, the, uh, maybe it's my word, um, like experimentation or a short term solution. Um, is there, is it, will that be the route you will take? How long do you think you'll be on as a vegan, a ketan vegan? Vegan. Ryan, what I'd like to do is I'd like to practice cyclical uh, ketosis. And okay. for those of you that are, are interested, it works very well for weight loss, but it's nice to have what they call a carb refeed. And a lot of the guys who are involved in gym can actually uh, vouch for having carb, re carb refeeds. And you carb up, it kind of uh, shakes things up in your body a little bit so that the body doesn't get used to it too quickly. Mm. I'm actually planning to have a carb refeed tonight. Okay. I must admit, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, really? Is it, is it like a bit of a binge? Is that what you call a binge? No, <laughs> is that a binge, keto binge? binge? I'll be eating healthy, yeah. healthy carbohydrates. Okay. Um, I have a function on tonight. Okay. Um, but I, I, I'm going to enjoy it. Okay. And then I will get back into ketosis over the next couple of days. Yeah. So tonight, I'm going to have carbs and that's good and <laughs> then i'll be back on the wagon is i don't really see it as cheating yeah but i'll do that psychically until i'm at my goal and then what i'm keen to do is is possibly to embrace more of the standard vegan diet if mm, it's if going it, forward if it fits well yeah, yeah. If, I, if i feel good on it I don't want to be sitting with um, with insulin problems. No, sure, sure. Jackie, tell me, what would as we come to the end of the show, what would your um, message of encouragement be to other people who, like you, were trying banting as a solution and then were disappointed with it? People who are trying different alternatives for health problems or just for, for, for healthy living reasons um, but are not finding success, what would your message of encouragement be to them? Don't give up. It seems so simple and we mm. hear it all the time. Mm. But... You know, I, I threw in the towel. Mm. I had lost a significant amount of weight and I just felt like this is an eternal struggle and you give up yeah. and the weight comes back on. Mm. This for me has been different because I've had a mindset change okay. about lifestyle and I would encourage other people, don't be afraid to keep trying and to find what works for you. Everyone's body is different and depending on your, your, your hormonal situation, your caloric requirements on a daily basis, and a lot more uh, different factors, there, there are different things that play into whether you're going to have a successful mm. um, result from how you sure, eat. Sure, sure. So don't give up. Okay. Jackie, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you, finding out a little bit more about something I don't know much about, as you've certainly given me much to think about, and I know you've given a lot of other people stuff to think about. Tell us, where can listeners find you if they want to um, contact you more about your journey? Ryan, anyone that would like to chat more and maybe find out about uh, getting involved in some of the vegan keto communities or just have questions can reach out to me on Twitter at GoSocialSA. Or you can find me on Instagram at GoSocialSA. Alternatively, connect with me on Facebook, uh, Jackie McRae Wilson, GoSocialSA. Great. Guys, if you have a look at my um, Instagram, my uh, Facebook and Twitter, you'll see I've just posted all of Jackie's contact details. Get in touch with her. She's someone who's done the research and has the has the right answers, I believe, and has, and has seen the results of them. Jackie, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for sharing that post on Facebook um, about a month ago. It really inspired me to want to get hold of you. And thank you for being so open and sharing your journey and encouraging, I believe, so many else, so many others. 
Ryan, it's been such a pleasure. I really appreciate it. And if this could just help one other person mm. to experience the success that I've had, I'll be very happy. Wonderful. Guys, that was Jackie McQuay Wilson um, talking to us about healthy eating, healthy living, and being conscious about our health. Um, next week on the show, we have Mr. Luxury Lifestyle himself. Um, I'm not going to tell you who that is. Straight from Harare, he will be joining us in the studio. So I'll actually have a guest with me. Um, so I won't be so lonely anymore. Um, yeah, we'll be chatting to him. We'll be chatting about all things luxury. And I hope you join us. That was Soapbox Radio. And I'm out of here. You've been listening to Soapbox Radio. Potting it out there with my, 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 my Lime Boots. Find My Lime Boots on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. At My Lime Boots and on you, 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 YouTube. At My Lime Boots Live.